I'm Nick. And we are Envy Board Gaming. And today, we're going to take a look at the two-player only game, Skull Hollow. This is a game designed by Keith Mataka, Ido Braff, and Dustin Faust, and it's published by Pencil First Games. Nick is going to give a brief overview of how you play, and then we're going to give our review. Let's do it. All right, let's go to the table for a game of Skull Hollow. Teach you how this game goes a little bit. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pick one of these guardians here. We have five in the game. You're also going to pick, after the Guardian is picked for your opponent, you're going to pick your Fox and Hero if you're playing as a hero team. And we get to pick from one of these cards, one of these heroes right here. They'll have different abilities, different life points maybe, and so forth. You're going to pick that person, and you're going to take the card over here. You're always going to have the Sentinel to start. You're also going to have some of the abilities that your opponent has when they select their player this uh this monster they're going to hand this card to you from their box that comes with their uh their character you can see this is the fox in the box right here so they'll be able to pick out of there and they're also going to find that the card that they picked and give it to their opponent in this case right there so they're going to flip that over and now they know the things that the fox and character that, that was selected can do um so from there, we're gonna start out putting these two characters that we selected, so the leader and the sentinel, which start the, every game right here. And the guardian starts the game opposite them. So in this game, you're playing looking from this angle and this angle, as opposed to a straight on, head on in a square. So always remember that your, your focus is this way and not like if I straighten this board out, that's why you're seeing a diagonal or a, a diamond board. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these player mats. So the first action belongs to the fox, the fox and heroes every game. They're going to get five cards and that's going to be their hand limit um, at the end of their turn. They're going to be able to play three actions. They have these abilities in their deck. And let's take a look at some of their cards in a second. And let's take a look right now at Raptra here, one of the Guardians. He has these abilities here. Again, this card that was given to our opponent, can they can look at it in reference knowing what's in our deck. They also get four cards, and they have two actions. And they have two spots for these bonus actions, which are which where these cubes go, these energy cubes. So the whole goal of the game for the Fox and Heroes is always to destroy the Guardian. To do that, they're gonna be putting these hit markers out here, these green hearts. They're trying to fill all these up, and then when that happens, they will be the winner. The Guardian, however, is they have one special way of winning. In this case, Raptra, they can eliminate all non-leader hero units from the ground spaces on Skulk Hollow map in order to win, or they can just kill the leader. And the leader is this yellow figure right here. You can see that leader symbol on there. They all have different symbols. So let's go over a turn real quick. The Fox and Hero takes the first turn, as I said, and they have three actions they can do. They can do an action from their hand. They could move and keep in mind the way we're looking at the map. So if you do a slant right, it would be a slant right here. So you don't, don't think of that as going straight. Remember, you're looking at it this way. So this is a slant left. And this is a slant, I'm sorry, this is a slant right. And this is a slant left. So they can do that, play that card for one action. They can also gain power cubes here. They would take these and put them in their pool. They could not assign them to their leader, these spots yet. They do it at the end of their turn. So they're gonna go ahead and take, let me show you the card right here. They have a pool right there. So I'm gonna put that in their pool. And the third action, they could spawn one of these heroes. They have a knight, which has a certain ability. They have a rogue, which has a certain ability. When they do that, they just take it from these meeples. Again, these all have symbols. And that would be their third action if they wanted to put the rogue out. They would take the one with the rogue symbol, which is a knife. 
right there. And they can put them in any of these sunny spots right here. So I'll put them right there. And then their turn's done. They draw back up to five cards because they have two. Our other player has a turn. They have four cards based on their sheet. So they can do their actions and theirs are totally different. They can heal, they can claw. And these actions are all, I don't need to go over all of them. They're all on their sheet. So they all have individual sheets for the characters and they all have different actions. You just learn them as you play. So if I claw, I would, uh, I would try to get to a spot with a person and then do my claw action. Another action you can do that's without a card is to discard one card and draw two, and that's with every character. They have that action. It does not require a card to do that. And they have special things that come in their boxes. This one, this one can actually fly. As you can see, all the wings. They can actually do an action where they fly and target opponents in certain spots on the board if they're in the, in the air. So they just have different things that, cool things that the monsters can do, whatever the guardian's power is. And then you're just gonna take it back, and you're gonna go back and forth doing your actions until one player gets their win condition. And that's how you play. Hey, review time for Skull Kahlo. Scores right away, 8.9 for me. That's pretty high. That's the highest one in a while. Yeah. Um, almost at that nine. But just why not? All right. Well, I think I might be talking about that right now. Um, very good game, obviously. Eight point nine for this game. It's one of very close to being my favorite two-player only game. The only reason it's not is because I consider Race for Galaxy a two-player only game, even though you can play it three and four. It's not good at three and four. It's not even fun. So it's a, that's a two-player game for me. Otherwise, this would be my favorite, probably my favorite two-player game, two-player only game. Um, that I own, that I've played, it's it's up there. I mean, I haven't played Watergate here. That's a good one. But um, of all the two-player only games, this one really stands out. Very cool things about this: the boxes, that, the different characters you can pick. They all their own boxes with actually very nice maple characters. Very large, chunky wooden pieces. Very very cool. Um, the monsters' abilities are all different. The foxing characters you even have different leaders for your foxing characters. Um, it has a good table presence. It has some interesting ideas. The actions are really good. I was trying to, and basically when I, I'm nitpicking of my criticisms, um, I feel like there should be at least one heal card for the Fox and characters. I do notice um, the way you can move around or the, the, the leaders, they give different abilities that could avoid being hit. So like the one I just played, um, I could pick up if i had those bonus cubes if i had the cubes the, uh, the charge yeah the charges if i had that i can pick up a card i just played so in that case well maybe i can move twice now if i just have one move card that's another criticism there's not a lot of move cards mm. um but i also can explain that away by saying the deck of cards you get as a foxing character isn't that large if it was a larger deck this would be a, a big problem but you can do an action. Remember, you have three actions. You can do an action to start cycling through more cards. That's not even a huge issue. Yes, I might put one more of those. Yes, I might put one heal card. Just one in the entire deck for the Foxing character. That is all it took to prevent uh, me from scoring this a nine. I had a nine. I thought about some very, very small issues, and I gave it an eight, nine. Um, that was all it was. That was the difference between making this a nine and, and not. So very high score, though. Truly do recommend this game if you um, play a lot of two-player games. Yeah, this is a buy. This isn't a try and buy. This is a buy. Vic? Oh, that's cool. I scored it. A 7.4. Um, Why? <laughs> well, let me tell you. You took a lot of the stuff I wanted to say. Um, but for me, I haven't won this game yet. I find it to be like a daunting task to win on both sides. Like every time it just seems like it's so far away from me to win. And the closest I came was the last time we just played and I was the uh, the guardian. Yeah, it's called the guardian. The bad, yeah. the bad guy. Yeah, buddy. And uh, I was so close. I was like, maybe I just made some bad calls and I delayed it too long and I needed to strike faster. Um, but it is a lot of fun. It's very cute, very cute game. I like cute stuff. Um, I like the cute artwork. I like the little meeples. As Nick mentioned, it has nice table presence. 
Uh, it's fun to switch sides with your opponent and try out uh, being the Foxen character or being the guardian, the bad guy. And it has a cool element of having to leap onto the, the figure and then you attack and then using your, your power cubes as bonus actions. Um, so it has a lot more than it looks, you know, mm -hmm. uh, built into it. And yeah, I would recommend giving it a try. For me, it's a try. Uh, see if you're into that, if you like uh, meanness, if you like fighting, but it's a two-player game, so you know, you mm -hmm. kind of assume that there's going to be some interaction between you and your opponent. Um, but we have a lot of fun, and I'm learning to take a loss. I think, I think okay. if we were to be playing um, more often with the same people, it would go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, it might take a second to learn exactly what tactic. You might change what you've done in certain situations. Like, oh, okay, it would have been better to collect the, the charges for this character or whatever the case may You're be. You're right, yeah. Um, but the case just happens to be that we've played six times and we've done all the characters um, differently. So we haven't played a single character more than once other than the, uh, not even the fox and because we changed yeah, the leaders. Yeah, we changed them. Um, so, yeah, we, we just do that as opposed to playing the same ones over because we want to give it a, f a fuller review than just uh, we use one of these guardians. No, we want to try a, a bunch of the guardians and make sure that our review is uh, adequate and not just put together, you know? Yeah, and I feel like there's probably a character in there for me that I can master eventually and get you with. If you even want to bring this to the table anymore, I know I like this game. I don't. It's not a game that I want because we we're gonna play it twice every single time because we want to reverse kind of like Memoir Forty Four. You want to play it. It's out here. You want to try the other side. Make sure both players have the opportunity to play both sides. It's a game like that. If you like Memoir and you like that role reversal type thing, you're gonna do. You're gonna play two of these every sitting usually. Mm -hmm. I don't see a situation unless you're running low on time that you're only gonna play one and then put it away. You want to play the other side yeah. too. That doesn't make sense. You're right. And you know what? If you're scoring at 8-9, I'm playing it with you. There's nothing that's going to stop me. If you're enjoying it, I'm not going to be a killjoy or a wet blanket. The good thing is I have so many, so many, so many games that it doesn't have to yeah. be the table that often. Endless yeah. options for us. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.